Hi, it's Jamie from Gilbert Farm here to talk about Mylar bags. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I use them for, why I use them, and what type that I buy. Mylar bags are foil packets that are used for long-term food preservation, so food preservation longer than a year. And what they do is they help to um, protect against moisture from damaging your food, from bugs from hatching, and also from um, nutrient loss. So the opacity of the bags uh, helps prevent sunlight from coming in and destroying uh, vitamins such as vitamin A and vitamin C. There are several types of Mylar bags. Uh, this is a one gallon Mylar bag that has a Ziploc on it for if you open it up and then you just want to store it on your shelf. And this is a five gallon Mylar bag that does not have a Ziploc. These are reusable. Uh, once you use them, once you open them up, you can save the bags and then reseal them. And I have several here that I'm probably going to use again. Uh, these ones have the Ziploc on them because I can't iron over the Ziploc. I'll probably just cut this part off and then I'll seal right here. And then as I continue to use these bags, I'll cut the part off that I used and keep working my way down till it's just impractical to use this bag anymore. Now, when it comes to buying Mylar, Mylar bags, it doesn't matter what style you buy, but what is really important is uh, the thickness of the bag. I would not go with anything less than a five mil bag. The reason for that is because anything thinner than that, if you hold it up to the light, you can see through it, and that's what's going to cause your nutrient loss. So if whatever style Mylar bag you buy, make sure you always get at least a five mil. Now, Mylar bags are used in conjunction in most cases, they're used in conjunction with what's called an oxygen absorber. These are thrown into the bag that, and they remove the oxygen. Oxygen is what causes, uh, well, first of all, moisture, but also it causes uh, bugs to hatch, or it allows bugs to hatch. By removing that oxygen, you decrease your chance of bugs hatching. Yes, they can still hatch, but it definitely decreases your chances of bugs hatching. Now, when it comes to bugs, whether you like it or not, all your food contains bugs. Um, canned mushrooms have a certain percentage of maggots that they're allowed per can. Your potato chips that you eat have all kinds of bug parts that are, that, that are allowed in each bag of potato chips. And when it comes to things like flowers and grains, they are allowed a certain percentage of not only rat feces, mouse feces, uh, and bug parts, but also eggs, which can hatch. Now typically these um, don't really hatch within a year, but given the right conditions, it's possible they can. And for that, that's the reason why you'd want to use a Mylar bag. Removing the oxygen prevents them from hatching. So what I have here is I just picked up some bulk food. I have 50 pounds of gluten-free rolled oats and I have 75 pounds of navy beans. Now, if I were going to use this within the course of a year, I would not need to use Mylar bags, but because I already have some oats that I'm working through right now and it's possible, well actually both of these, that it's possible that they're going to last me longer than a year, I'm going to not take any chances and I'm going to preserve them in Mylar bags. Now there are other options if you don't want to use Mylar bags for um, protection against food. Um, for short term bug protection, you can throw some bay leaves into your, your food, which helps deter bugs. Uh, some people use diatomaceous earth mixed in their food, which, which I do not do. And for long-term uh, bug protection, uh, some people freeze their food. One option might be uh, to put your food outside on three days when it's freezing. You have to freeze the food for at least three days in order to kill most of the bugs. And then again, using the Mylar bags with the oxygen absorber. Now, there are some foods that you cannot use oxygen absorbers on. Those would be um, such as your, your oily foods, such as nuts and your sugars. If you put an oxygen absorber in with sugar, it, it'll turn it hard as a brick and it'll give it a weird taste. So if you're storing sugar, you can store it in the Mylar bag, but you cannot use the oxygen absorber for that. Now, oxygen absorbers come in several different sizes. This is a 2000 cc. And this is a 500 cc and I have some, I believe these are 100s in the jar. Um, the size of your oxygen absorber is dependent on the size of your bag and what you're storing. So 
Items that are maybe more dense, like your grains, would require less oxygen absorbers. Items like your beans, which have a lot of air because they're not as dense, would require more oxygen absorbers. There are a lot of charts online that tell you what size oxygen absorber to use with what size bag and what type of product. The one that I use is US Emergency Supply. Um, it has a really good site that tells you what size uh, oxygen absorber to use for what size bag and for what product. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna bag these up. Now, uh, one thing when it comes to oxygen absorbers, as soon as I open this bag, these things are going to start uh, sucking up oxygen. You can tell from the little eye that's pink that these are good to go. Once this eye turns blue, th these oxygen absorbers are no longer good anymore. Now, it's very possible that I will not use all of these oxygen absorbers uh, for, for all the products that I have here. If that's the case, one thing that you can do is you can throw them very, very quickly into a mason jar, pop the lid on real quick, quick, and they will seal. So these, you can see the eyes still pink, I threw that in there, um, will probably be good for another use. If you have any extras, you can do that with that. Okay, so normally when filling up a five gallon uh, Mylar bag, you could stick this inside of a five gallon bucket, and this is going, and the five gallon bucket would offer some support for this bag, but I am fresh out of five gallon buckets, so we're gonna see if we can make this work by propping it up in here, because this is where I'm gonna store them until I can get some more five gallon bags. All right, we're gonna start scooping. And you're gonna to wanna to shake these down to get out as much air as possible and pack it. That way your oxygen absorbers have less work to do. So this bag isn't quite as full as this bag. In order to uh, reduce the amount of oxygen in here, I'm just gonna trim some off the top. Um, again, the least amount of empty space you have, the better chance that the oxygen oxygen absorbers have to work. So we're just going to trim a little bit off. All right, let's do our beans. I'm going to start off by recycling some of these old bags and I'm going to cut off the Ziploc so that there's room to seal the bags. So just to show you, here is a new bag. You can see there's room up here above the Ziploc to seal the bag. But because these are already used, I cut that part off. So in order to have room to seal it, I need to cut off the Ziploc. So the Ziploc's really only good for one time use. So I actually forgot, uh, I have some half gallon bags. So these smaller ones are the half gallon bags. These are the one gallons and these are my five gallon bags. So in order to tell you what size uh, CC oxygen absorber I need, you wanna look at a chart like this US emergency supply and you can see where they have the container type the type of food, whether it's a wheat, flour, grain, or rice, or whether it's pasta or beans, which are less dense. And these top ones are for buckets. We want to go down here to the Mylar bags. So the, the uh, five gallon Mylar bags are going to require about 2,000 cc's for my oats. For the one gallons, uh, over here at beans, we need about 1,000. For my half gallon, we also need a thousand. So a thousand in the small ones and two thousand in the big ones. Whoops. 
and 2,000 on the big ones. Okay, so I have 500 cc oxygen absorbers here. These bags all require 1,000, so we'll put two in each one of these bags. And the five gallons require 2,000 cc, so we're gonna put four oxygen absorbers in these bags. Before we open this bag up, this ha we have to do this really quickly because these are going to start absorbing oxygen. Uh, I need to have a jar ready with a lid, so if there's any left over, I'm going to throw them in this jar and put the lid on super quick. And we have to have iron. So now what's going to seal these bags is either is going to be an iron. They make iron specifically for Mylar bags, but you can use a regular old clothes iron or one of our viewers suggested using a flat iron, and since we don't use this puppy anymore, might as well put it to some good use. So we're going to give it a try this time. Okay, so this is going to be really super quick. Let's get started. seal up pretty nice. It helps if you have a partner, but mine's a little busy right now. actually works really well. It's a whole lot better than using a clothes iron. The clothes iron, you'd have to like lay this down on something flat. We had boards here in case this didn't work. It works really well. And one thing to note, I have this iron set on 350 degrees and it seems to seal pretty well. We did do a little test before we got started. You're going to want to Make sure that you test it so that it's not too hot and doesn't melt the bag and also that it's hot enough. Another thing is I got so excited in showing you guys how to do these bags that uh, I forgot to write what they were on the bags. Usually I write it before I write uh, what the product is before I fill the bag. So I got like one mystery bag over here. That would be interesting to see what that is when we open it up. It's either going to be navy beans or pinto beans. That works rather nice. Um, if you had to use the iron, you would need a board like this. And you'd have to fold this down over this and then use the iron on it. Um, I actually like this a lot better. I'm really glad that uh, we got this suggested to us. This works fantastic. Like I said, now uh, 
uh, I have to write the names of what these are. Before you pack your bags, write what it is and write the date on it. Uh, it's a lot easier than writing it on afterwards because then you don't know what's what. Um, these are Pinto supposedly and these are Navy. Okay, so now all of the bags are sealed and labeled properly. Um, after about 24 hours to up to about a week, it's going to take that long for the oxygen to be removed from the bags. You'll start to notice that the bags shrink up like this in most cases. But in some cases, like in this quinoa bag, it, it still looks like there's air in there. And it, 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 there is air in there because the oxygen absorbers remove the oxygen, not the air. So there's still nitrogen in there, uh, and it's very possible that it can look a little loose like this, but it doesn't mean that it's bad, it's okay. Now, how long do these last? Um, people have reported that Mylar bags can store food for up to 40 years or longer. Uh, really, as long as you open it up and there's no bugs in it, and it looks good and it smells good, you can eat it. Now, what do we do with these bags now? Well. These should not be stored on a shelf just like this because it's very easy for a mouse or a rodent to eat through this bag. They should be stored in some sort of bucket or container. Um, you don't need to use a food grade bucket if these are already in food grade Mylar bags. You can just stick it in any bucket. For our oats, uh, I ran out of five gallon buckets, so I'm just gonna store it right here in this plastic bin with a lid on it. And for my um, my beans, I have these same buckets, a little bit smaller, that I'm gonna store them in. So again, Mylar bags, they're really good for dried goods, such as pasta, whole grains, uh, anything along that line, cereals. Not so good for things like sugar or anything that has a moisture content. Um, don't want to store probably chocolate. Uh, coffee would be a good thing to store in, in these kinds of bags. Um, and they're good for up to 40 years. You don't need to use Mylar bags if you're storing for under a year unless you're really concerned about bugs or moisture or any kind of um, nutrient loss. Really that's not a real big issue in under a year. So. If you guys wanted to know how to do that, there you go. If you guys uh, currently use Mylar bags and have any tips or tricks, I'm not an expert on this stuff, this is just what I do. Uh, you guys out there, I'm sure a lot of you guys are the experts on this stuff, feel free to leave a comment below if you have any tips or tricks on this kind of thing. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those below as well. If I don't have the answer, I'm sure somebody else does. If you like this kind of stuff, like, subscribe. We have a lot more videos coming out on prepping, on food storage, on stretching your meat, uh, with different kinds of sauces and different kind of recipes, a lot of different things coming out and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching. The chickens want nothing to do with this business. They are inside their hen house trying to stay warm.